Hi, Jim from Lutes here, and today we're gonna to show you the Lutes overlay. We're gonna take a look at where to find your overlay, how to add it to your streaming software, and cover some common mistakes and troubleshooting issues along the way. This is going to be a longer video, and I'm gonna do my best to be as quick and precise as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. The Lutes overlay is the browser source URL that you're gonna to need to add to your streaming software in order to add Lutes to your stream. So first thing, after logging into your Lutes account, head to the Live Overlays section of your dashboard as shown here. From here, we can see uh, we got three options for overlays. We've got the standard default overlay, we've got the snap overlay, as well as the custom overlay. So from here, uh, you can choose to enable or disable uh, the optional overlays, the snap and the custom. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and enable both of these so we can take a look at some of the placement options and uh, adjust them how you want. So moving on to the positioning tabs, you can see that we can choose from top right, bottom right, top left, and bottom left for our standard. And the snap and customs, we can choose from the left side or the right side of our page, of our overlay. Normally pressing the test overlay buttons would allow us to uh, display a test message, Lutes message would actually come through on our overlay. Uh, but since we haven't placed that yet, we're gonna come back to that in just a little bit. Scrolling down the page, uh, you can see a drop down menu, and this is where you select what streaming software uh, you're using to get your, over your overlay URL. Okay, so now you can see I've went ahead and minimized the page and opened our first piece of streaming software. In this case, we're gonna start with OBS Studio, uh, as well as go over Streamlabs OBS and OBS Live uh, using Stream Elements. So first thing we wanna do is go ahead and copy our browser source URL. And then we're gonna go ahead and come into our OBS. And from here, we want to add a new source. We wanna add a new browser source. We can do it by either clicking on the add plus button or right clicking in the sources menu, clicking add and finding browser. From there, we can go ahead and name it whatever we'd like. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead with uh, Lutes overlay and uh, make the source visible. Now, in the properties menu, we only have a few things to change. Uh, from here, we're gonna wanna paste uh, our browser store overlay source into the URL box. Next, we wanna set the height and width, the total size, so 100% of our streaming resolution. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be 1920 by 1080. If you're unsure what size your stream base canvas resolution is, you can always check that in the video settings menu of OBS. Simply open settings, click down to the video tab, and check the look for the top option that says base canvas resolution. This is the uh, resolution that all of your scene is set up as. And once we get to the bottom here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose, uh, I'm actually gonna check both of these options, the shutdown and the refresh. The reason for this is a uh, shutdown source when not visible. Um, if I wanna use um, loots and I have a scene that I don't want it shown on, for example, or if I'm doing an event that I don't want it to, uh, to play during that special event, uh, this will help with that. Uh, the refresh browser when source becomes active option really just uh, enables us to uh, refresh the overlay source when we're changing scenes. So if you're experiencing any kind of overlay issues when changing scenes, perhaps several times during a stream, um, this option may help you make sure it's selected. So next, after getting it inserted into our scene, we're gonna make sure that it's on the top lowest uh, layer for the sources. So in OBS, you know, if you're familiar, uh, the top most source is the one that's always on top, kind of like a sheet of paper. So next, we're actually gonna go ahead and uh, head back to the overlay page and click on the test overlay button. So let's go ahead, click on the test overlay. After a few seconds, we're gonna go ahead and see the overlay pop up, and there it is. You can continue to do this um, if you'd prefer with the other, other overlays, uh, just to see what those like. Um, but for now, it looks like everything is set up and working correctly, which is great. So now that it's set up, looks good, we can actually just add this to our other scenes, uh, easy uh, as adding a source. So for example, if we create a new scene, scene two, click sources, add browser, we can just select the Lutes overlay from our existing menu, click okay and everything should be set up and working correctly. 
If you're using Stream Elements OBS Live, the process is exactly the same that we just covered for OBS Studio. So we're gonna go ahead and click continue without logging in. From here, we can add a new browser source, name it Lutes Overlay, click OK. Then we're gonna go ahead and paste in our browser source URL into the URL box, set our width and height of our stream. So again, I'm gonna enter 1920 by 1080 and select the shutdown and refresh boxes, click OK. Looks like it is scaled properly to our stream. Then all we have to do is click test. If your test loose doesn't play after a few seconds, simply come back in and click the test overlay button a second time. There we go. So it looks like it's scaled properly and uh, then we can go on and duplicate the process for every other scene we'd like to put loots on. Browser source. And this time, instead of creating a new one, we're gonna go ahead and select our existing loots overlay. And there we go. Next, we're gonna take a look at Streamlabs OBS. So this process, again, is similar to the regular OBS Studio instructions, but it may look a bit different. So in Streamlabs OBS, what we're gonna do uh, to create a new source is click on the plus new source. Then underneath standard option, we're gonna choose the browser source and click add source. Then this is where uh, we name our source. So this time we're gonna go ahead and name it Lutes Overlay again and click add new source. From here, what we're gonna do is the same process. So we're gonna insert our overlay URL by control V. So copied and pasted it in there. Then we're gonna set our width and height to 1920 by 1080. FPS and custom CSS, we're still gonna leave as default. And again, they already have the shutdown when not visible active by default, but we're gonna go ahead and also enable the refresh button and click done. From here, we can go ahead and uh, test the overlay again. So here we can see that the overlay uh, is a little, little bugged. So we're getting the loading bar, but we're not getting the message displayed properly. Don't worry if this happens to you, we can easily fix this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back into our Lutes Overlay properties. And this time we're gonna go ahead and click the refresh cache of the current page and click done. So now when we go and test our Lutes Overlay, everything should work properly since we refresh the connection. There we go, easy. And now it's the same as before. If we wanna add the Lutes Overlay to another scene, we can simply create our new scene, click done, add the source, at our browser source again, click add source. And then from this, this menu, instead of creating a new one this time, we're gonna go ahead and select our Lutes overlay from the add existing menus. There we go, and it's been added. Next, XSplit. So adding a source to XSplit is the same process, but slightly different than OBS. So in the lower left-hand corner, we're gonna click add source, web page, instead of browser source. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and control V to paste in our browser source URL, click okay. Now that we have the uh, source added to our scene, we need to go ahead and adjust it and make sure it's positioned correctly. Uh, first thing I see is that we need to rename it. So we're gonna go ahead and click rename, Lutes overlay, enter. Next, we're gonna go ahead and right click on the source to get the uh, settings menu pulled up. From here, we can click Reload on Scene Enter. This is the same as refreshing every time we change scenes in XSplit. Next, head over to the Layout tab, and uh, up in the top section of our position, we're gonna make sure that our X and Y positions are zero and zero, so it starts in the upper left-hand corner of our stream. Next, we're gonna go ahead and set our overlay size to be 100% of our scene as well. So in this case, 1920 by 1080. There we go. And then we're actually gonna uncheck the keep aspect ratio box to make sure that the overlay plays at the correct size. Uh, from here, we can just click outside anywhere because the settings uh, auto update as we go. So now we can simply go back, click the test overlay button and ensure everything's working properly. So here we can see that the overlay is actually playing way too small <laughs> and uh, we're, we're actually uh, against terms uh, by having it at this size. Don't worry, this is a similar thing that happened previously. All we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, come back into the settings, and we're gonna go ahead and click the refresh button. So now the scene should be refreshed, just in case we do it one more time. 
And now we come back in, test the overlay. It should play at the correct size. Boom, there we go. So from here, now that we've got our Lutz overlay, uh, we're actually gonna repeat that entire process when you wanna add it to a, to a whole nother scene. So we would go scene two, add source, web page, control V to paste, layout set to zero by zero, set to our stream height, 1920, 1080, unchecked aspect ratio, HTML tab, reload on screen enter, and a preliminary refresh. I'm gonna come down here, rename it to our Lutz overlay, click enter, test. And there we go. X split done. On to the next. So now we're gonna take a look at Lightstream. Lightstream is web-based, and so in order to use Lightstream, you'll have to simply go to www.golightstream.com and you'll get to this page. From here, what we wanna do is come up to the right-hand corner and click the Start Streaming button. And from here, we're gonna get three options. We're gonna get Lightstream Studio, Lightstream Prism, and Lightstream Studio on Mixer. The first one we're gonna go over is Lightstream Studio. So when we click on that, we're gonna be presented with an option to link our streaming accounts. So go ahead, do that, and we'll see you in the next screen. Okay, so now we've got our streaming network connected and we're in our Lightstream dashboard. You can see I went ahead and added the Lutz logo into the background to kind of show you how the layers work in Lightstream. So to add the Lutz overlay layer, all you have to do is come up, click new layer, find third party integrations, and then find the Lutz option from the integrations selection menu. If you don't have third party integrations uh, in your add layer options, what you need to do is come up to the Lightstream Studio settings, down to Lightstream Labs, and look for the third party integrations and make sure it's enabled. Then we can simply enter our browser source URL, click paste, and that's pretty much all you have to do. As you can see, Lightstream automatically scales the uh, overlay to 100% of our scene, which is what we want. Next, we're gonna to wanna to make sure our Lutz overlay is on our topmost layer. And then we can test it from there. So let's come back, send a test through. And there we go. Next up, we're gonna take a look at Lightstream Studio on Mixer. So to do this, again, come up to the upper right hand corner, click on the Start Streaming button. And then we're gonna choose the Lightstream Studio on Mixer option. From here, we're presented with a screen that lets us know we need to have a Mixer Pro account in order to access this feature. The reason for this is because the Lightstream and Mixer partnership actually puts your Lightstream overlays directly on your Mixer stream. This is different from regular Lightstream Studio in that it doesn't require you to be streaming from a PC in order to utilize this feature, which is perfect for Xbox One users who are streaming directly from their Xbox One to Mixer through the app. So we're gonna go ahead and click Explore Studio. From here, it's the same as it was in Lightstream Studio. We're gonna click on Add Layer, come to Third Party Integrations, find the Lutz Overlay option. From here, we're gonna add our overlay URL, make sure that the uh, source is scaled to 100% of our scene, which it is, click OK. Wait for it to tell us it's loaded, perfect. And then send a test overlay through. There we go. So. Now, this essentially enables us to add Lutz to an Xbox One stream going directly to Mixer. Lastly, we've added a generic overlay URL option for those who may be experiencing issues with the regular CRL enabled overlay. To find this, simply select generic overlay from the options, and you'll see that we're presented with a, a URL link. When clicking this, it's gonna take us to another website where we can actually get our browser source URL from. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy that and as you'll notice, it does present us with a chroma key green background, which we're gonna have to be removed in the streaming software later. So in order to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it in XSplit. Um, it's the exact same process as before. We're gonna go ahead and add source web page, and we're gonna control V in our URL, click OK. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and open the options menu. We're gonna reload on scene enter as we did before, come to layout. Make sure this is in the zero position, zero position. We're gonna scale this to our streaming 100%, so 1920 by 1080. Make sure the keep aspect ratio is unchecked. Refresh our source. And then 
come back into the color menu. And what we're actually gonna need to do is come down here to the keying and click chroma key. It should default to green by default, but in the case it doesn't, open up the key color menu and choose green. And that's it. Now we can come back and send a test overlay. And there we go. That's how you use the generic overlay in your streaming software. So the last thing I want to go over with you today is the common tip chart errors and what they mean. You can always find and refer to these under the support section of our website under the what do I do if my viewers cannot send me tips section. So first off, we've got the streamer is taking a tipping break. This means that the tip jar is either paused or drained. And you can find the pause or drain buttons on your live dashboard page underneath status. Next up, we've got the wow, a temporary tipping limit has been reached for streamer. This means that the tipping limit has been met and tipping is temporarily paused. This could either be your daily tipping limit or your monthly tipping limit. Congratulations. Next up, a connection error has occurred. Streamer has to reconfigure the browser source to activate tipping. To fix this, you simply need to create a new overlay URL and replace the one in your streaming software. As mentioned previously in the video, if you're using OBS, you can enable the refresh source when scene becomes active box, so the overlay source refreshes automatically when you're changing scenes. Next up, we've got the oops, streamer needs to do some more configuration to activate tipping. This means that you still have another step to finish in your setup process. To find this, you can refer to the setup guide on our website underneath the support page as the very first entry. Finally, we've got the streamer is not live at the moment. This means that the system is not detecting that the broadcaster is currently live, and they'll need to refresh their connection from Lutz to their streaming network. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this information helpful. Again, I'm Jim from Lutz, and we'll see you in the next one.